What's going on guys? Welcome to Angling Attic Pacific Northwest. Today we're going to be talking about salmon fishing with spinners, going over some rod selections, some reels, some lines, some spinners, and also covering a variety of different ways that you can set up your spinners to get out on the water and be effective. So let's get started. So we're going to start out with rods because I know there are a ton of rods out there on the market and for anybody that's new just starting to get into this, I know it can be pretty overwhelming trying to uh, select the right size action and power of a rod to be able to uh, get out on the river and be effective. So we'll first start to narrow it down by length of a rod. Uh, as I brought up in a previous video, my preferred length of rod for doing spinners is nine foot up to nine foot eight, and nine six being a pretty common one for throwing spinners. Now, when it comes to the power of a rod, uh, what I have here is a light action rod. Now, I have managed to hook a few salmon on this rod, but I would have to say that a light action rod when it comes to salmon fishing uh, is just maybe not enough to actually get out there and uh, be as effective as you possibly can. So what we're going to do is move on to the next rod uh, in that line. Now, this is a medium light rod, and this rod obviously kind of bridges that gap between a light and a medium powered rod here. So what I have is a nine foot six Okuma Salillo. And uh, as I just mentioned, it's a medium light action rod. It is uh, rated for six to 12 pounds and a quarter ounce up to a half ounce lure weight. So we've got a rod, nine foot six, medium light action. We know we're holding a rod that for the most part, it should be able to get out there and catch us some salmon. Granted, unless it's a really nice big Chinook and it's gonna give you a run for your money on this rod, we wanna step up a little bit higher. but. Now we're going to come down to the line weight on this. Now this rod is rated for 6 to 12 pounds. Now that doesn't mean that you can only put on 6 to 12 pound line. Uh, it's really just saying that this rod is built for its best performance, uh, castability, and sensitivity around that 6 to 12 pounds. What I like to use is 30 pound braid on all of my reels and my, with my rods, obviously. So if we take a closer look at this braid here, we can see that it's a 30 pound braid. But just below that rating there is uh, showing us that it's just an eight pound diameter. So that eight pound diameter is going to fit within our six to 12 pound uh, spectrum that we've got here. So we know that this rod can handle 30 pound braid. Now that's going to take us down to the lure weight. And as I mentioned in a previous video, these are some specs that you really want to pay attention to. Now this rod here is rated for a quarter ounce to a half ounce. Now once we were to start getting out of that half ounce range and trying to put on a heavier spinner, it is still going to build a cast. But once we start overloading this rod, it's just not going to cast properly and effectively for you. So this would be a great rod for fishing some of the smaller rivers and uh, tributaries around here. But it is not a rod that I would recommend for going out and trying to throw three quarter ounce and one ounce spinners, say on the lower Columbia or on a big river. For that, we'd want to start moving our way up. So let's move on to the next rod. So the next rod that we've got here is one that I actually just picked up for salmon fishing. This is a nine foot eight Akuma Cascade Pro. It's got a line weight of uh, six to 15 pounds and a lure weight of a quarter ounce up to a three quarter ounce. So now being that it's a medium action rod, I've got a little more stiffness to it, a little more castability, nine foot eight for a little bit more reach there. And then looking down at our uh, line weight down here, again, we got six to 15 pounds. So I know I can take this 30 pound and I can put it on there. And then down to our lure weight, quarter ounce to a three quarter ounce. Uh, a lot of the spinners that I have right here behind me are within that spectrum because it's pretty common. Uh, but now I would be able to actually take this rod and go fish lower Columbia or something big like that and be able to take a three quarter ounce spinner, or half ounce, and be able to throw them with no problem. So this is one of the reasons I just picked up this rod is because overall with length, power, uh, and the lure weight and everything on there. It's a great rod for being able to get out here and uh, it's actually pretty cheap as well. I think I spent about $60 on this one. Well, we do have some other rods that we can go through, but I think that's enough to kind of clear it up for most of you guys that might've been kind of lost. What it is that you're looking for on these rods so you can know what kind of fishing it is that you want to do so you can make that better choice between nine foot and nine eight, depending on what kind of rivers and waters you're planning on fishing. So uh, let's move on to some reels. All right, so we've picked out the right rod for the job, and now we gotta go and pick out a reel. And I know this part can be just as frustrating and overwhelming, if not even more so. So we're gonna rule out a couple things right off of the bat. If you're looking at a reel and it shows that it can hold four pound line, six pound line, and eight pound line, you've got a reel that is for trout fishing, pan fishing, for something else. You don't want something that small because it's definitely not gonna get the job done for you. The first one we're gonna come down to here, and it's another product that I've actually been pretty happy with, 
and that is Fluger. This is a Fluger President Press P40. We've also got an Okuma C55 down here, and we've also got a Quantum Pulse bait casting reel. So now we've got a reel that kind of catches our eye. So one of the first things that we're gonna to wanna to do is look at the line capacity that's on there and make sure that it's gonna be able to handle what it is we wanna be putting on here. So if we pick out a rod, we already know that we wanna use some 30 pound braid. We wanna make sure that this reel can handle 30 pound braid. So if we take a closer look on here, the first thing we see is that mono in pounds and yards, eight at 285, 10 at 230, 12 at 195. And this one shows us braid. So again, we've got 10 at 320, 14 at 280, and 20 at 200. Well, I wanna put 30 pound on there and it doesn't show that it can do 30 pound. Well, if we do a quick little math breakdown on there, we know we could probably put about 150 yards of some 30 pound on there. So this reel will handle what it is that we want to do. It'll match up with our rod and it can handle the line that we want to put on there. Then we've got our C55 here by Okuma. Now this one is different than the other because it does not show you the specs on there of what it can handle for line capacity. So hopefully there'll be a tag out there that'll show you what the capacity is. Uh, if it doesn't show you on the box, then you can also possibly ask the, uh, the store clerk there who might have the knowledge and be able to tell you what it is. But I'll tell you right now, the C55 is one that will work for salmon and steelhead fishing. And you can put 30 pound braid on there. You can put 50 pound braid on there. And it's just a big reel that'll be able to handle that big line and a lot of line and be able to handle the fish that's gonna be able to shred line and take you down river. And when it comes to bait casters, they're gonna be the same thing. We're just gonna to wanna to make sure that we've got the specs and enough line that we're gonna be able to get on here and if we catch a fish to be able to handle this fish if it decides to make some runs on us. Now that takes us down to line and something I get asked about quite a bit. Should you be spooling up with monofilament or should you be spooling up with braid? And really it just comes down to personal preference. Me, I've always been a fan of the braid. And the main reason for that is I like the high vis because I can see my line, I can see what it's doing and it helps me better manipulate what's going on with my gear. But the biggest factor of why I choose this is if I'm gonna snag up and I'm gonna break off, braid usually doesn't break. Typically, I'm just gonna be breaking off a small section of my leader and leaving less gear in the water. Now, when it comes to monofilament, I've never been a big fan of monofilament. For one, it's just too stretchy for me, and it has more of a tendency if you snag up to uh, break kind of wherever it wants to break. So instead of losing that little bit of leader as I would with the braided line, I could end up losing 50 feet of this stuff, which ends up just getting stuck in the river and becomes something else for other things to get stuck in and other spots for fishermen to cast into and get snagged up as well. So, uh, monofilament works great though. So again, it's really just gonna come down to personal preference. So 30 pound braid is what I mentioned I use. And so if I'm using a 30 pound braid, obviously you wanna use a lighter leader. So if you get some sort of breakage, it's gonna be happening down in your leader, not on your main line. So having that 30 pound braid, I typically am going to be using 20 to 25 pound line uh, when I'm throwing spinners. It just depends if I'm targeting coho or if I'm targeting chinook. But the same rule is going to go for monofilament. If you're going to be spooling up with monofilament, you're going to want your leader to be a little bit lighter. So if you're going to go with a 30 pound mono, you're going to want to do the same in between maybe 20 and 25 pounds of, uh, of leader. So now we've got our rod or our reel or line. So that's going to take us down to the business end of this rig and picking out our spinner and getting this thing tied on. So let's do this. All right, now I know tying on a spinner sounds pretty self-explanatory, but there are a couple of different ways to do it because I do get asked quite a bit. One of them being obviously if we're using our braided line, we've got a swivel on the end of there. The other option is to just go braid with a line to line knot right there. We used a uni knot to tie our lines together so it gets rid of the swivel there. So that's just one way to start out getting down to your leader. Now, if I was going with the braid down to the swivel, I'm gonna end up now attaching my leader on here. So the length that I typically use if I'm out salmon or steelhead fishing is I'm gonna use three feet of leader. And typically I tie my leader directly to my spinners. I don't use another little clasp swivel or clip swivel down there. But if I'm going with that line to line knot like that, I'm using three feet of leader that's gonna go down to my spinner, just as I would be if I were to do the braid to swivel, I'm gonna do three feet of leader coming down to my spinner. And like most things, there's more than one way things can be done. So we can either tie directly to our spinner, and another way that I've seen a lot of people do it out there is just to tie on a little swivel with a clip and uh, it makes it easier to just be able to swap out for your spinner. And then there is one more option and it's not one that I recommend, but I do have a buddy who catches fish 
left and right with this and it really just kind of blew my mind now he ties his spinners directly to his braid uh granted it's not the high vis yellow he uses a green but he'll tie his spinners directly to his braid and the guy will yard and fish left and right uh, again it's not really something i advise or recommend to anybody that's new just because if you get snagged up on that that's just, it's really gonna give you a run for your money. And then inline weights. It's not something that I typically use because I have spinners that are heavy, but it's something that I see a lot of people do out there and they still seem to catch fish. And I know a lot of people wanna use these weights just to get that additional weight added onto their line so they can get their spinner out further. So if it is to be used, you can just tie one of these uh, inline weights here directly onto your braided line and then just run your three feet of a leader off of that and tie to your spinner that way when you cast out you do have that additional weight on there again it's not something that i ever really use but uh, if it's something that you need to do to get your gear out further then i say go ahead and go for it because i have seen people uh yard and fish with those on there so now it comes down to choosing your spinner and the size of your spinner, the kind of spinner. Uh, and really that's gonna depend on where you're gonna be fishing. You're gonna be fishing a big river that's deep and faster moving, or you're gonna be fishing uh, something that's not as deep, maybe slower moving. So one that I would use if I was down fishing, say like the lower Columbia, I need to cast out far. I need my gear to get down fast and start work, working quick. This is a seven eighths ounce flying C by MEPS. Those things are really popular around here for uh, fishing down on the coast, down in any of the bays out there, tidal waters that are going to have some of those incoming uh, salmon out there. They've got a variety of colors, a variety of uh, sizes. Just a good one to get out there. I'll give you guys a good close-up uh, of this. Another one, the old tried and true. This is going to not have as much weight, but we've got a little number five blue fox spinner here. Now these things are killers for salmon and steelhead. Uh, I wouldn't really use those down on the lower Columbia because it doesn't have that weight to really get down as fast as I need it to. Maybe if we were to use one of those little inline weights, but having these options of heavier spinners. Another one that we've got here is by Yakima. Uh, I've thrown this one a couple of times, but you can see that it's a nice, big, heavy lure. And again, when we're choosing spinners, we're wanting to make sure that that size and weight of the spinner isn't going to be exceeding what our rod can do. Uh, lastly, we've got uh, one of our very own here from Angling Attic Fishing Co., these squid spinners, uh, 3 8 ounce, half ounce, three quarter ounce, one ounce, uh, just having that selection because that's again, as I mentioned, it really depends on where you're going to be fishing, uh, but having the selection of colors and sizes is the way to go. So my best advice would be just kind of shop around or if you're down on the river and people are catching fish, find out what they're catching fish with and uh, try and get some of your own and see if you can't replicate that and get some fish of your own. Well, I hope that helped get some of you guys hopefully pointed in the right direction and now you know what you're looking for when it comes to selecting a rod, a reel, a line, and spinners and the different ways of getting them set up. So uh, medium action rod, 9 foot to 9 8 is uh, kind of what I recommend. Uh, when it comes to choosing your line, I would recommend uh, in between a 20 and a 30 pound uh, braided line. And then when it comes to selecting your uh, leader, I would go with a uh, fluorocarbon something that's uh, not as easily seen. And then obviously you're gonna to wanna to step that down just a tiny bit in weight from your main line. So your leader is gonna be a little bit weaker in strength than your main line. So if something's gonna break, uh, that's what it's gonna be. Uh, and obviously a couple different ways of setting up your spinner. So hope that helped out you guys. I appreciate you watching. Please leave me some feedback down here. If you guys liked the video and it helped you out, please uh, give it a thumbs up. Best of luck out there.